So Chad, I'm watching your videos here on the internet and, and in the video on the internet, you talked about this piece of slag here that was an AR-15 that had been in a fire. Tell me a little bit about what you guys did to get this back to operation. And then I want to show you guys something. Come on. Well, we had two, we had two guns. The first one uh, that was damaged in a fire, we basically attempted to get all the corrosion off of it. A lot of the times when a gun's in a fire, you get um, a lot of moisture, get trapped inside of the whatever container it's stored in, and you get a lot of surface rust and times some deep corrosion as well. Um, so I, I use a commercial product for the most part when I'm trying to remove rust uh, called Evapa Rust. That can be good for guns like an AR because there's normally not any bluing on it, but you put a blue gun in that and it trashes well, evapor the Well, Evaporust chelates. It, it, it attacks free iron molecules. It pulls them out of the oxide. So Evaporust is awesome when you want to go all the way back down to zero. Um, and it also, and it leaves behind very little residue. I use Evaporust, but I have to be very careful because I got a lot of blue guns. Go on. Um, but we basically got all the rust off of it. We replaced the springs on it. Uh, we mm -hmm. checked headspace to make sure that, you know, it was safe at a minimal level. Uh, checked it with straightness gauges to see if there was a bend in the barrel. Just the basic 101 safety check. And then we started testing it. Uh, today we have thousands of rounds to the first gun. The second one, we took a little bit different approach. We cleaned it again the same way. Got down to its bare material, if you will. We lost some anodizing because it got so hot. Um, but That's we, been... Yeah, it's bent outwards, but what we did with this one is we avoided replacing parts on it. So instead of just replacing all the springs like we did in the previous gun, this one we mm -hmm. wanted to see if anything would work okay. without doing any parts changes. I knew that it was going to need some parts, but we wanted to use that as sort of a troubleshooting method for our viewers to see, hey, what is the bare necessities? Because a lot of people will ask, what parts should I keep on hand? What parts are going to wear? What parts are going to break? It's a good um, point. And if you're going is exposed to high heat, corrosion, these little parts. I would say a, a, a fire would be the ultimate um, uh, wear component. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So basically three springs. The, the original pistol grip melted. The uh, pad for the buffer had melted. So okay. I put, had to put those on, of course. Right. Three springs. Extractor spring, disconnect spring, ejector spring, and she's running like a top. Okay. Spring tempers. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand this. When Ray Bradbury wrote the book Fahrenheit 451, that's the temperature paper burns at. Wood, you're lucky if wood gets over eight, 900 degrees without being pushed. You have to be blowing air into it. So if it was just a fire that was not force ventilated, you can get up over the temperature of drawing the temper on the springs, but not get to the 1300 plus degrees necessary to mess the metal up. Now, again, that's a... Um, definite, I got to hold it in my hands to tell you that. I make the point, is my gun safe to shoot after this fire? I don't know. Let's ask a guy in Seattle, Washington, whether or not my brakes are safe. No. But, was that spring replaced? Nope. Okay, so the temper on that, on that dust cover was not drawn. Aluminum will melt at just over 1,200 degrees. I'm just ishing it. So the part that bent here that's in the non-pressure component of the gun. Yep. And as long as the mag will snap in and the cartridge presents correctly, that's not an issue. One of the beauties of the stoner system, and it's really not stoner, it's Melvin Johnson. And that's why there's a Johnson automatic rifle on the table. We'll talk about that in a minute. One of the beauties of that system is this gun could be make, made out of paper mache from here back. Yep. If the paper mache was strong enough to hold the pins for the fire control group. So you replace the things that got drawn and it went right back to running again. Would you sell this gun? No. Would you even give it away? No. It's your personal one. You've made the determination that it's good to run. You're going to hang on to it. There is some liability here when you're talking about a firearm and other human beings. <laughs> there is that. Well, part of the reason why I have a Johnson automatic rifle here on the table is the Johnson automatic rifle is where we go from walnut and steel over to plastic and aluminum. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. The Johnson automatic rifle was a backup plan to the Garin. It was never intended to be a, a competitor to it. It was merely a backup plan and it was designed to be um, fabricated and fabricated quickly. 
And one of the things that Melvin Johnson did was he had his bolt lock up inside the barrel extension. And it's really odd that when you look at an AR, it's the same thing. And what happened was Melvin Johnson was a consultant for Armalite after the war and allowed Armalite and uh, Eugene Stoner to use his patents. Okay, so this is where the jump happens. And what, what that means is that all of the, the uh, pressure forces and head spacing is done inside the barrel extension, not inside the receiver. Had this gun been in the same fire, there would not have been much of it left and it would have been difficult to requalify unless it happened to have a barrel that does the head spacing. So let me get this just right here. That's gotta be right there and then that will lock in. Let me get that right in the right spot. There we go. That snaps in. So we can see what, what Melvin Johnson figured out was how to unlock the gun with a very short amount of motion. And then with that motion, then the gun's unlocked, you see, and then the inertial comes to the rear. So the same deal here, when a bolt carrier, when you pressurize the bolt carrier, the bolt carrier picks up a little bit of inertia to the rear, a little bit of momentum to the rear as the bolt head's unlocking and it takes off. But all the work is done up here, same deal. When a recoil punches this, whatever, whatever momentum the bolt has when it unlocks, that's what it carries all the way to the rear. So because of that, this gun was incredibly tolerant of the fact that it was immolated in a fire, replace a couple of springs whose temper draws somewhere between 450 and 700 degrees. The fire was not hot enough to melt the aluminum at 1200, which tells me it could not have gotten the steel hot enough to have completely messed this up and you have run it and it doesn't, it didn't blow. So, that was great to find out and also look at how these two interrelate. Walnut and steel, plastic and aluminum, they both go bang. Um, and, and that, this is fascinating that you guys undertook all this. I've done a couple of guns that were in a collection fire and they were basically reduced to a charcoal briquette. Um, always put one on a test stand and shoot it after this happens. Put it up on a test stand and if it's gonna blow up, let it blow up. 100 feet from here while you're jerking on a string. Um, and, and anything else you have going here? What are your plans for this particular unit down the line? Well, this this one and the previous one was donated from the owners. Um, the first one was replaced through the owner's insurance policy. So he had okay. already been made whole and he donated the gun. This one, on the other hand, though, um, insurance did not cover it. Okay. Um, not sure if they didn't have it. <clears throat> but basically, um, several of the manufacturers from the original components right. stepped up and said, hey, let's give this guy a new gun again. So okay. they're sending me all the parts. So Daniel Defense is sending me a whole new upper uh sons of liberty gunworks is even though it's not their lower it's an fn lower um i didn't have anyone at, at fn that i could reach out to so right. sons of liberty is donating lower um and then guy Lee is going to replace the trigger and the maritime bolt catch that they have on there so we're nice. essentially giving giving the the young man a whole new gun the phoenix lo rises losing everything <clears throat> And That's uh, good. he's donated this to School of the American Rifle as well. So we can continue to show people, hey, this isn't this little princess that a lot of people make it out to It's be. not. It's very robust if you uh, if you give it some, some chances. Outstanding. Well, that's good to know. And I'm glad we got to do this follow on here. I just wanted to see for myself. So I journeyed up here to, to uh, Chad's shop and just wanted to see the thing with my own eyes. And as always, it has been a pleasure.